Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgurin Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. Almost said Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but that's only because I did it for like 30-something episodes, and it kind of became a habit. Anyway, in this episode, we're going to be fighting some people. Luckily, the fighting that we're going to be doing for the most part of the beginning is not really, you know, out of malice or anything. It's just sort of like training. It's, it's this game's way of getting you ready for fighting. So the first person we're going to fight is Waka, which, as you guys know, is a character from Final Fantasy X. Now, in Final Fantasy X, he actually used the, the Blitz Ball as a weapon as well, so it's kind of funny that he does that here. But in this fight, if you hit back his Blitz Ball back at him, he will actually, first of all, give you a tech point. And also, man, I'm just not going to get this timing down, am I? There we go. It will actually daze him, as you can see right here. Which isn't... None of these fights are particularly hard, but, I mean, whatever you can do to make them easier, I guess, because we are going to have to be fighting three people at once in a second, so you can actually use Waka's Blitz Ball technique, you know, hitting it back at him to make that fight easier. But the main reason I like to hit it back at him is because of the tech points. And unfortunately, that does actually hurt him, as you can probably see. So you can't use that for unlimited, you know, tech points. Like, you can, I believe you can do that with Titus. So I'm not going to do that, really, but that is an option that you can do. Now, another thing that I forgot to mention is that Waka, if he hits you with that Blitz Ball, you probably heard him. He's like, I'm good. I, that, for some reason, that phrase always used to, like, drive me over the edge and make me just want to, like, absolutely demolish him. For some reason, when he just, like, all of them taunt you, and I don't know. Now, Selfie is one of the worst offenders. Just listen to her talk. Okay, don't hold back. And it looks like she's using a jump rope. I know it's probably not a jump rope, but it really looks like a jump rope. And it's kind of like the weapon she uses in Final Fantasy VIII. If you guys didn't know what game she was from, she's actually from Final Fantasy VIII. But for whatever reason, all of the characters in this game are younger versions of them, of themselves. From whatever game they came from, they're actually younger. And I think I kind of touched on it in the last episode, but I'm not sure why that is. I mean, maybe just to make it a little more kid-friendly, you know, the game. And as far as I remember, I thought she used nunchucks in Final Fantasy VIII, but I could be completely misremembering. Maybe this is, you know, the childish version of nunchucks. I'm not exactly sure. Not entirely sure, as Spoonie would say. Now, another thing that I wanted to touch on, and by the way, Selfie is probably the easiest of the three or four people that we'll have to be fighting right here. And see, she's already done. But one thing, she is pretty fast. Now, the thing I was going to talk about was I might go ahead and switch to expert mode, like off camera after this episode or something like that because I think Expert might give me a little more challenge, just make the game a little bit more challenging, I guess. And it would just, I guess this game is very easy on normal, and on Expert, I think it would be just, like I said, a little bit more of a challenge, and maybe it wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to fly through the game as easily. Maybe, you know, show some deaths or something like that. And as I'm fighting Titus here, hey, so not Titus as, you know, Waka calls him, I'm going to talk about Basically, in the last episode, when we were able to choose between a sword, shield, and stab, what I, a thing I forgot to mention was that, depending on what you pick, that'll change the order that you learn some abilities in. If you pick the sword, your first, you know, abilities are going to be related to combat and combos and all that kind of stuff. If you choose the shield, it's going to be more, you know, defensive stuff, like, there's a uh, an ability that lets you not die like it'll put you at one hp if you get hit with a mortal blow or something like that i think there might be a, a pokemon move like that too and wow titus went down really fast and he uses like that looks like the power pull from dragon ball you know goki used to use the the power pull in dragon ball that's exactly what that looks like and you know what he doesn't use anything at all oops i don't want to fight you again actually yeah i do want to fight all three of them i'm probably going to lose here but he used an awesome sword in Final Fantasy X, and they kind of downgraded him to a, a stick, honestly. Now, what I like to do here is take out Selfie first. Now, I'm probably going to lose, because it seems like I always lose this fight. What I like to do is take out Selfie first, just because she's the weakest one, and apparently I'm not going to get any hits on her at all. But what you have to watch out for, obviously Titus is coming in with his stick, you know, hitting you in the back and stuff, and then you've got... Waka, I almost forgot his name, you got Waka coming in from like, long range, throwing blitz balls at you, so, I kind of, it's really selfie first, because that's kind of a self-explanatory right there, there it goes selfie, and then it's kind of a toss up between Titus and Waka, I kind of like taking out Waka first, just because like I said, that long range aspect is kind of annoying, but it looks like Titus is right for the, hit, you know, hitting right here, oh, this is ridiculous, oh no, okay, good thing, it looked like, you know, Titus, like, made me invincible to walk his, like, ultimate blitz ball attack or whatever. If I lose, that's just gonna be... Wow, what happened there? Oh, I thought I won already. Walk, I... Sw oh my... That... 
for some reason, the blitz ball being thrown at me is just, like, infuriating. But one thing I don't know if you guys realize is that if you... Titus, I swear, one thing that happens is if you hit back, you know, Waka's Blitz Ball at any of the other characters, they also get stunned as well. So that's kind of cool. You can, I'm not, you can't really use it. You can kind of use it to your advantage, like I said before, but it is kind of hard to direct the Blitz Ball, you know, at a specific character. Come on, Waka. Oh my, why? Um, all right, guys, looks like I'm going to have to do this, uh, you know, fast motion again, like last, last Let's Play. Why? Hey, you guys! I think. <laughs> Finally. I don't know if I'm going to show the intermediate fail right there, but I lost that first one on camera, and then Titus, or, and then Waka took me out with a, you know, the mega blitz ball throwing attack, and then I finally got it, but I kind of figured out, did I pick up the rope already? There was a rope right here. If I didn't pick it up, I mean, obviously I did because it's not there, but I don't remember picking it up. Anyway, we have to get that rope right there, and there's a cloth that we have to get up there in the thing, like the treehouse area. Now, there's another thing right here that I never knew what this was for, until I started like replaying the game and stuff. As soon as we collect all the things that we're supposed to collect on the island, that will actually open up. Or actually, I think it's actually day two. When we play during day two, that will open up and that'll take us to another part of the island. But it's actually the same exact area of the island that the door that Kyrie is standing in front of will take us to. So it's really just two ways to get to the same area. Now we got the cloth, we got the rope, and now we need two logs. Now one thing I never really understood is why is nobody else helping me get this stuff? The other log is over there where Riku is. I've, apparently I'm going the wrong way to get over there. But Riku is standing on the island where we have to get the other log. You think maybe they would be able to help just a little bit. And I think if you talk to Riku, he'll say something to the effect of, Oh, I already gave all my supplies to Kairi. Well, you couldn't have walked literally like 10 steps to your left to get this log? I guess not. Speaking of Riku, let's go ahead and fight him. Now, what level are we? Four? I guess it, I've beat him at level three before, so he's not all that hard. He's harder than anybody else, but I'm not sure if he's harder than, you know, the three-on-one fight or not. But let's go ahead and fight him. Did we get everything for the right? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I gave my stuff to Kairi. Thank you. Now we're going to take him on. Riku is actually kind of hard, not going to lie. If only because it is very hard to get off combos on him. I mean, he blocks all your attacks, it seems like. And he'll taunt you and stuff. And when he does that kind of that thing right there, when he holds his sword up like that, you can't really hit him. So you got to wait for him to stop. I guess if you get close, maybe he'll- there we go. He like taunts you into attacking him, and then when you actually do, he'll block it and then retaliate. But there's one attack that he does, where he like falls on his back, and if I can get him to do it- There we go. Oh, move! See, that attack right there was devastating. You would think maybe the wooden sword attack would be a little bit more- Move there- oh my, that thing is so hard to dodge. But you would think maybe the wooden sword to the head attack that everyone seems to be using is a little bit more devastating than the- you know, rear back on your back and let loose attack, but apparently not. Look how much that takes away. And that's why I really recommend just, like, get a pot shot in every once in a while. Like, go in, hit them, run away, and just keep doing that until you can actually beat them. Because it seems like he'll do that. See, move! Thank goodness. I think that was more luck than anything. And one thing that I found that works pretty well is actually if you try and do aerial combos and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's just me or not. If you'll ever stop blocking, maybe I can try and show you. Oh my... If I lose, you know what, I don't even care. All that happens, really, is that he will give you a potion. So, oh, another thing. Move! Oh, my lord. And another thing, it's kind of important, I guess, that I got the... There. Oh, man, he jumped right over me. But when I picked the shield at the beginning, that kind of increased my, you know... Oh, wow, I won. That increased my defense to the point where, apparently, those attacks that he does from his back don't actually do all that much damage. Fortunately. Now, we got a potion there. And you can keep doing that to get however many potions you want, by the way. And what I kept, you know, trying to mention, but I kept forgetting or starting over or whatever, is if you do that three-on-one fight, you will actually be able to get potions every time you win that fight as well. But we have all the logs, we have the cloth, and I've, I've got the rope, I believe. So let's go ahead and talk to Kyrie. Wow, I found everything already. Yes, I have. She found something of ours. Thank you very much. High potion. So that's not that bad. Let's go ahead and give it a, or call it a day. I think we might get a cutscene here.
So, Kyrie's home is out there somewhere, right? Could be. We'll never know by staying here. But how far could a raft take us? Who knows? If we have to, we'll think of something else. So, suppose you get to another world. <laughs> what would you do there? Hmm. Well, I... I haven't really thought about it. It's just... I've always wondered why we're here, on this island. If there are any other worlds out there. Why did we end up on this one? And suppose there are other worlds. Then ours is just a little piece of something much greater. So? We could have just as easily ended up somewhere else, right? I don't know. Exactly. That's why we need to go out there and find out. Just sitting here won't change a thing. It's the same old stuff. So let's go. You've been thinking a lot lately, haven't you? Thanks to you. If you hadn't come here, I probably would have never thought of any of this. Kari, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Sora! You wanted one, didn't you? A palpoo fruit? If two people share one, their destinies become intertwined. They'll remain a part of each other's lives, no matter what. Come on, I know you want to try it. What are you talking? <laughs> Hey there, Donald. Good morning. We've got a problem, Goofy. But don't tell anyone. Ooh. Queen Minnie? Not even the queen. Daisy? No! It's top secret. Oh, good morning, ladies. What? <clears throat> Alright guys, now we have control of Sora again, and we actually got to see a little bit more of the Disney side of this game. And if I remember correctly, is that actually the first time we've seen a Disney character so far since the game started? I think it actually is. 
when I saw that part, I I was so taken aback, and not taken aback in a bad way either. I was just like, awesome. We have Final Fantasy characters that we've come to know and love, or I came to know and love, and Disney characters. I was just like, wow, I could not believe it. But Kyrie, if we talk to her, basically asks us to go find food for everybody on the raft. First of all, there's a couple of things that I think are weird about this. She wants us to find... I'm not sure if she says exactly what she wants us to find. Let me go ahead and... I think I'm gonna have to go talk to Riku again or something to get her to give us a, a bottle. But we have to find three mushrooms. We have to find bottled water or like, you know, fresh water we can put in a bottle. Three fish and there's a, a seagull egg or something. Is that really gonna be enough food for our journey or whatever? I don't think so. Now here's the other mushroom or one of the other mushrooms. The other mushroom is actually kind of hidden. But one thing that is important to get right now is a missable item. Missable item alert. If you grab that box, which was over there, put it right here. You can actually jump on top. If I could get on top of the box. There we go. You can actually jump up here. Oh my goodness. There we go. There's an item up here called the, I believe, the Protect Chain or Ring or something like that. Let's see what it is. Protect Chain. I guess I almost got it right. But the other thing is that we need to worry about here is we need to go talk to Riku. Now, Riku and Sora are friends. I mean, I think that much is clear. But the thing is, they kind of have a jealousy. Not really jealousy. I think there might be something going on with them and Kyrie, obviously. But if we talk to him, our, the raft that they're creating still needs a name. And he wants to call it the High Wind. Which, and we get to call it what we want to call it as well. I'm just going to leave it Excalibur. I actually like the term High Wind better. Just because that was the name of the, you know, the airship and it seems like every game. And that was also Sid's last name as well in Final Fantasy VII. But what we can do here is actually race Riku. And the only purpose of this, I think, I think no matter what happens, it's been a while since I've done, like, anything with the gummy ships and stuff like that, which I'll be getting into later. If I win, uh, I'm captain. And if you win... I get to share the pow with Kyrie. Huh? Deal? The winner gets to share a pow with Kyrie. Um, wait a minute. Okay, on my count. All right, I didn't want to be rude and talk over Sora and Riku, but I think you actually get to call the ship whatever you want to call it anyway, whether you win or lose. And the only other thing you actually get for winning, I believe, I think you get something called a pretty stone or something like that. And I never use this shortcut, if you could even call it this right here. So let me go ahead and try it. There's like a zip line you can use. Don't press any buttons as soon as you jump on it, because you will actually, you know... Oh, there we go. I was going to say you will jump off of it, you know, prematurely or whatever. If I lose this race, I'm not going to really care all that much. Just because, like I said, you only get like a, I think what they call a pretty stone, which is worth 30 money. And by the way, money in this game is spelled M-U-N-N-Y, because I guess they were trying to be Disney-ish or something like that. But the pretty stones you get are only worth 30 money, which is not really too much, you know, money. And how many times am I going to say money in like five seconds? But some people actually do like to get, I wonder if there's going to be another cutscene, apparently not. But the pretty stone, I'm not sure if I called it pretty stone or not. But you can get 97 of them if you, you know, race them and win 97 times. And some people consider a 100% run getting 99 of every single item in the game, which I don't consider that to be a 100%. I consider that to be like obsessive compulsive disorder 100%, but I don't really consider that, you know, to be 100%. That's just overkill. So I'm going to try and get, you know, 100%, you know, not 99 of every item because I'm not going to race him 97 times. And the reason I'm saying 97 is because I believe you can get two in the next town that we go to. So I'll have to get that. Maybe I'll get those when I get there. Now, I believe I got... Okay, she gave us the empty bottle. Now we need to go get fresh water. There could be some places to get in on this side of the island. But the only place that I'm really sure of where you can get the, the fresh water is actually on the other side of the island in that waterfall. If there's another area on maybe, you know, on the island somewhere, I wouldn't be... Or I would be interested if you guys could tell me. Now, there's also... We have to get some fish out there. In classic full-grown gaming style, I like to cut out, or not cut out, speed up stuff that is completely pointless. So I'm going to cut out the swimming out there, because it's pretty obvious what we have to do. As you can see, there are fish out there. Whoa, not in the sky. Fish that we have to collect, so we need to get three of those. Wow, that took way, way less time than it usually does for me. Usually when I try that, it takes like 
I always get two and I can never find the third one. Now up here, there is a seagull egg, I think is what they call it. I'm pretty sure this was not here yesterday, you know, in game time when we were here, so I'm not sure. Maybe one of those seagulls that's flying around laid an egg. But if so, how did they know? How did Kyrie know there was going to be an egg up there? I'm not sure. Now if we talk to Waka, I think he's going to talk- Oh, let me go ahead and get some fresh water while I'm here. We actually have to go to the that little opening over there, which I'm not sure if you can tell is even an opening. Over there. I think Waka has something to say about that, though. Me and Titus, we are going to do a little exploring today. You know, to the secret place at the base of that tree. There's got to be something there, yeah? Okay, a couple of things. Not calling Titus Titus, because that is just completely obnoxious. That is one, like, I usually say, oh, if they pronounce it in the game, that's how it's pronounced. But, I cannot bring myself to call that character Titus. That's just outside of the realm of possibility for me. But, apparently, Titus and Waka have never been in here, but obviously, we, I'm, there's a mushroom I don't want to pick up right yet because it'll start a cutscene. But if we look right here, that is clearly Sora and Kyrie. So Sora and Kyrie have been in here before, and there's some paintings on the wall that I want to show you guys. There's one. There's a chocobo right there from the Final Seven, Final Fantasy, I don't know why I said Seven, the Final Fantasy series right there that is crossed out. So I'm thinking that's kind of funny how they were like, oh, there's no chocobos in this game. And there's one more that I want to see. I think that is Disney Castle right there, which we saw in that cutscene. And somewhere there are, yeah, there's hearts and spades and stuff like that and diamonds, like the cards. So that has something to do with, you know, Alice in Wonderland, which we'll be getting to later. Now, I believe as soon as I collect this mushroom, we're going to be getting a cutscene. Who's there? I've come to see the door to this world. Huh? This world has been connected. Well, what are you talking about? Tied to the darkness. Soon to be completely eclipsed. Well, whoever you are, stop freaking me out like this. Huh? Well, well where did you come from? You do not yet know what lies beyond the door. So you're from another world. There is so very much to learn. You understand so little. Oh yeah? Well you'll see. I'm gonna get out and learn what's out there. A meaningless effort. One who knows nothing can understand nothing. Alright, I'm not sure who that is. Maybe we'll find out by the end of the game or something like that. But what is this door doing here? We can't go through here, I don't believe. Nothing really out of the nothing really out of the ordinary. There's a door in a cave. I think that is a little bit out of the ordinary. I'm not sure exactly what they were referring to there. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this episode up here. This might seem like a weird place to end it, but it, it is almost like half an hour long. Not sure how long it's gonna be after I cut that one failed fight out. But we did collect, unless I forgot something, we got the eggs, we got the fish, we got the mushrooms, and there could- Oh, coconuts! We gotta get coconuts. Let me go ahead and get the coconuts before I end the episode. We could go back to the coconut tree grove or whatever back where Kyrie was, but you can actually come over here and get some coconuts. I love how I forgot the coconuts of all things. And we can't just get regular coconuts. If I could lock onto this tree, that would be awesome. Apparently I can't. But we have to get golden coconuts. Are there going to be any falling out of these trees? Don't make me- One thing- The games I do seem to make me liars, I swear. Alright game, I, I see how it is. Maybe this one will give me some gold. 
It seemed, for some reason, the locking on system really wants me to lock onto that tree over there. There we go, there's a gold coconut. We actually have to get two. I thought the game was like, no, we uh, we know you can get gold coconuts from this grove, but we're not gonna give it because you're doing a let's play right now. There's our second gold coconut, guys. And then the reason I'm in, another reason I'm ending the next, this episode right now is because of that. I can't even talk anymore. After we give Kyrie all these things, there's going to be a bunch of cutscenes which will make a great introduction to the next episode. So I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts. I cannot believe I'm doing this game still, and I can't wait to see you guys back for the next episode.